Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you, my day has started pretty rough and uh, something that I, I hate sharing with you guys. And you guys know that my animals mean so much to me. I mean, every one of these animals, whether it's Ben and Jerry, it's Bella, whatever it is, I mean, these are more than just animals on exhibit. I mean, these are my pets, these are my love. I have so much feeling for each of them. And then of course, some animals even more so than others, you know, that emotional attachment, whether it's with training with Elvis or the emotional attachment I have with Bella. Well, you guys remember the other day that Taz was not doing very well and we had to tube feed him. Well, this morning, I gotta be honest with you guys, came in and, and Taz hadn't made it. I mean, he passed away and, and I didn't want to show you that part, guys. I've done it in the past, and, and I get emotional when I see my animals, and, and it's, it's really difficult. I mean, it's really, really hard, and it's part of keeping animals. We've all been through it, but, uh, but Taz was so special to me. So guys, this is what happened, you know, every year Tab had Taz, he's four years old, and these guys typically live 30 years, you know. Well, every year he's went into brumation during, you know, November, December, January. It's not uncommon for that to happen. Most of them do that, and he just went off of food, just like he did every other year. And, and we basically didn't even mess with them that much. We rarely took them out. We let them alone because, again, they need to be in brumation and kind of calm down. And, and um, we noticed about two weeks ago that he started to look really thin. I mean, you know, like every other year he looked great and he started eating again. This year he looked great and about two weeks ago he just started to shrivel up really quick and it really concerned me. So obviously that's when we, you know, talked to our vet, we talked to other people that we know that work with Tegu's and we decided to tube feed him. And, and the tube feeding went fine and, and the next day he even perked up a little bit and we thought, all right, we're on the right path. We figured we'd tube feed him every four or five days and really get that body energy up. and. And then yesterday he was pretty lethargic and um, it definitely had me concerned. So the first thing I did this morning when I came in was check on him and and yeah, he, um, you know, he, he didn't make it. And, and it, uh, I can't express the devastation I have right now because you guys know how much time I spent with Taz and how much he not only meant to me, but what, how many lives he's changed being around kids. I mean, he was always one of kids' favorites. And, and um, you know, I've always talked about the fact that I'm going to take you guys on the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is the ugly part, you know. And, and anyone that's kept animals has lost animals. I mean, why? I don't know. You know, we'll send Taz out for a post-mortem, see what's going on, just to make sure that I know the next time I know what I did wrong, you know, and I, I don't know if I did anything wrong. It, nothing changed. Same thing that he's been for the last four years. And, and so, but I want to make sure I understand what happened and if there's any chance that I could prevent it in the future. But I think anyone that keeps, in particular, a lot of animals, whether a zoo, a breeding company, have a lot of pets, you're going to have losses. It's going to happen. And I, I wanted you to know that if you've gone through this, you're not alone, you know? And if I were to hide this, that wouldn't help anybody. And and yeah, I'm hurting, I am, because I love that lizard. And, and, and like I said, I, I wanted to keep it together today for you rather than breaking down. And it sucks. It sucks more than I can even express to you, but but if I wanted to keep animals and do what I have to do, this is part of it. And I have to take this part and accept this part as much as it hurts. You know, the Reptarium's been around for two and a half plus years now. And, and even I've been surprised that our animal ambassadors have just thrived in this environment. Not that I thought there was going to be an issue, but I've been around animals a lot. And I, did, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been that surprised if one or two animals didn't thrive in the environment or, or whatever and, and we basically haven't lost anything I mean every animal has just done so well for us here it's it's been 
really amazing and in my wildest dreams I didn't think something would happen to Taz because tegus are so hardy and, and like I said it's very typical for them to go through a brumation. The only thing I can maybe say is maybe I should have actually put him into brumation in a cooler area and that way he wouldn't have lost calories instead of going into that brumative state but still being 80 something degrees and that was probably something I should have done but every winter prior to this I did the same thing and he was fine. He didn't lose a lot of weight and he ended up coming out of me. He was perfectly fine. So it's definitely, uh, you know, I'm going to second guess myself. I'm going to beat myself up. What happened? How did it happen? I mean, but I don't want it to happen to anything else. And like I've said, you know, we've been so fortunate that every animal here has thrived so well. And of course, you guys that have been with me for a long time, remember I had an albino Burmese called Sunshine, who was just an absolute darling of a snake. And, uh, and she passed away and and it was really difficult and and um you know in that case i i, I got emotional because i found her and i filmed it and and like i said i just decided like i didn't want to do that today i want to is crappy as this is i don't want to make this a crying video i don't want to make this you know i, I didn't want to bring that emotion into it i wanted to to take a few minutes and and, and get myself kind of centered again so that I could talk to you guys about this and and you know will I get another Tegu? Probably yes to be totally honest. Will it be another Taz? Probably not. You know I mean Taz was a one in a million and and who knows though just like Sunshine was such an amazing animal when I got Sunrise I was like that can never be the same animal as Sunshine was because she was such a great snake and and here we are two and a half years later and Sunrise is so amazing. Did she replace Sunshine? Of course not but she is still an amazing animal ambassador and you know now I think the same thing I don't know when I'll be ready for a tegu. I'm going to give it a few days before I really think about what I'm going to do. But, um, but you know, tegus are amazing, and I think that there's something I want kids to be able to interact with. Now, I need to find one that's super tame and super amazing, just like Taz was, and and it won't bring Taz back or make it better. But you know, hopefully, the same thing that will happen with Sunshine. And Sunrise, hopefully we'll get the new Tegu and and it'll replace at least that part of the educational thing, the outreach thing. Uh, for me emotionally, it's gonna be a while, you know? Whenever I lose an animal, it, it's hard. It takes some time for me to get over. But again, I want you guys to know that I'm sure almost every one of you that have kept animals has lost something. And sometimes you feel really alone in that. You know, you feel so responsible, just like I feel responsible now. Like, what did I do wrong? Why, why did this happen? What could I have prevented it? Should I have two fed it earlier? Should I have put it in brumation? I, you know, all these questions go through my head. But the fact is, is that, you know, we all go through this and you're not alone if you've lost things and I know I'm not alone because I've lost it and I wanted to share it with you. Um, I don't want Taz to just disappear and, and, and then you guys never heard him. Remember I always tell you if something happens I'm going to tell you, right? I'm not going to hide it from you and, um, and this is a bad day but you know what? I don't want to have the whole day terrible. I want to, we've got a lot to do here. We've got a lot of things to do today. And we've got a lot of things to do every day. And we have to keep pushing forward. And yes, I'm going to grieve. And yes, I'm going to feel bad. And yes, I'm going to probably cry a bit. Uh, but you know what? Let's try to keep things positive today as best we can. You know, and, and, and let's just try to somehow get busy so that I can take my mind off of... Uh, a situation that I wish would have never happened. And I tell you one thing that I know will take my mind off of everything is talking about 3.0 in the expansion. And I actually have an inspector from the city coming today and we're gonna have a conversation about the fact that is it even possible? Will the city allow me to do it before we start to figure out the rest of it? But is that something I can do? I mean, is that like within the ordinance to do that? Well, no, yeah, you can. It's feasible. You would obviously just gotta be the right size, the right height, all that stuff. And the good news is, is he said he has no problem with this. Now, let me just tell you guys, before I'm selling off animals or downsizing, a lot of boxes have to get ticked, guys. I mean, I'm just starting to set myself into a position where I'm starting to try to find the answers to those questions. You know, you know, all right, city says yes, that's a great thing. Now we gotta get engineers out here. Is it possible? What's the cost of it? On and on and on. So I'm not doing anything yet. You know, I mean, this is gonna take me a few months probably to get to a point where I even have the answers I need to know if I'm moving forward with the project. 
project. I sure hope so. I think it's going to happen. I think it's doable. Today was a big day knowing that the city is behind the expansion, so that's absolutely incredible. But again, we have a lot more to learn. So this is a long, long process, and we are just on literally the first steps. Whenever I need comic relief, I can always rely on uh, this guy here. Jay the edutainer. So what do you have going on now, seriously? So I'm trying to harness train Dwayne. Harness train an alligator? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, right, so he's gonna walk around when he's big. Now this might be a little too big right now, but we've just gotta start, you know? <laughs> okay, so Jay is, Jay is obsessed with Dwayne the Croc Johnston here. Uh, he, he constantly is working with this animal. Of course, uh, he, he's teaching it all kinds of things, and he's got Lori convinced that we're gonna keep this alligator its whole life. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So, okay, so yeah, that's way too big. Yeah. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be too big. Let's just try it though. Oh my gosh. Do you think he's gonna like it? Yeah, he loves everything. He loves everything? Yes. Oh my gosh, it is adorable though, isn't it? Oh my gosh. If you could pull this off, man. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. He's gonna go home with me when it's when it's warm out. Oh my We're gosh, he's gonna have sleepovers. Gonna have, gonna have sleepovers. Okay, so it's a I used to sleep with RJ in the hotel room all the time. Yeah, that's definitely too big. No, no it's not. You don't think it is? No, he's got like a jersey on. Okay. Look at so him. do you think that and you're going to put a leash on here? Yeah, but not yet. So we're just going to ease him into it. The first okay, so harness will first. just be wearing it. Now and walk around like this, and then next week we'll start to get him walking on it. Okay. Look well, at him. He we'll keep you. Uh, loves we'll, it. We'll keep you posted on the progress. Like I said, he always can cheer me up. We only have one pair of African fat tail geckos, but I put them together a couple months ago. So we're going to go through and check their uh, cage for eggs today. I don't have a lay box in here, so it could be pretty much anywhere. <laughs> So this is dad here, hopefully. Hopefully we've got a couple eggs in here. Ah, oh, look what we've got. Now this one, it kind of feels like a little bit soft, so it may actually be a slug. But that's still a great sign because I've never gotten eggs from this female before, slug or otherwise. So hopefully the next set will be really good. I'm gonna set this up anyway though, just in case. Yep, and then uh, these guys are actually super similar to leopard geckos as far as breeding and incubating their eggs. So I'm just going to set these up with my leopard gecko eggs and it should be about the same incubation period, about two months. And hopefully we have a little baby African bat tail gecko. I don't know if you guys know, but actually shed skins oftentimes you can see pattern and even sometimes color. Uh, interestingly enough, like hypo ball pythons, the melanin, the lack of melanin, that black pigment, actually means that the shed is almost clear and you can't see pattern. So Jay has a shed that he wants me to try to see if I can see what kind of a snake it is. So what is this? All right, I found it this morning. What do you think it is? And it's at the Reptarium. At the Reptarium. Let's see. Oh, I know what this is. This is uh, Gerald, the Doomerald ball. Oh, man. You're right. I know. You're right. I've been doing this a while. I thought I was going to throw you off because it's so big. I know. See, I got it. Try mm. again later. All right, next time. <laughs> so again, guys, I mean, I realize that uh, today's a bummer, but we're doing the best we can do to get through it, you know, and this is part of the journey. I mean, you can't have it always good, right? And so, listen, I appreciate you guys joining me, and I hope that you appreciate that I tried to take a little bit of a different spin on this one rather than being really emotional about it. I wanted to be more practical. And, um, and again, I'm going to be okay, and we're going to be okay but it does suck, so I appreciate your support, I really do. If you don't mind, uh, just go ahead and hit that subscription button. If you don't mind, I really do appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.